the book itself, which is called Virtual You, is really uh, about the future of medicine, how we can use digital twins. You can think of that as a virtual digital doppelganger of yourself or an avatar, which uh, exists in a computer and is uh, in every sense a high fidelity, detailed representation of yourself. And that's at many scales, from the molecules in the genome up to the whole human level for you personally to improve our understanding of medicine and to allow clinicians to use that understanding to make forward predictions for how you would best be treated in therapies, surgery and other scenarios. But it also spans much larger scale because it's not just about one, it could be about many. Pandemics, epidemics, infectious diseases involve how we interact with each other. So it's about assemblies and populations of virtual humans for healthcare purposes. And even today, we're looking at uh, in silico clinical trials, for example. And what does that mean? It's about, again, groups of in silico versions of individuals that can be evaluated for their response to new drugs and treatments, because no two people are the same. And to be able to de design these therapies much more effectively and efficiently. The important thing is that the people as a whole need to be aware of the pace with which medicine is developing and that these ideas are not science fiction, but already reality. We have virtual hearts, re faithful representations of individuals that can be used for the purposes of determining design of medical uh, instruments like pacemakers and for surgical interventions. So it's happening. And we want the population as a whole to understand the issues there because many of them are exciting uh, and offer improvements, but there are also moral and ethical concerns around all of these issues that need to be discussed and uh, decisions taken about how to use the technology in the future have to be made in a consensual way. Yes, the book uh, contains a lot of science. It's really trying to bring everyone from the the, the specialist to the general public up to speed with what's going on. So we've covered a very wide area there and spoken to many of the leading proponents of aspects of what's required to make a virtual human. You'll appreciate it's not just the biology and the physiology and the medicine, it's the necessity of using computers to, to be able to model and simulate all of that and then make predictions. So the discussions go through all of those topics and they this um, include people like R Roger Penrose and uh, uh, Craig Venter and Leroy Hood and, and many leading figures in the healthcare sector, as well as scientists who are building the most powerful machines currently available on Earth, which are exascale computers, of which you know the, the most well-known and officially only machine is Frontier at Oak Ridge National Lab how we need that kind of computing power and technology to be able to capture aspects of the virtual human. And beyond that, how are we going to use this new capability and understanding in a healthcare context? We won't be able to run simulations of every individual on these incredibly powerful computers. We've got to find ways of extracting what matters and be able to do those types of computations on lower end uh, devices. The really exciting aspect of it is that because we're trying to deal with the human condition, we do have to make sure our own models and simulations are reliable. And that goes to the heart of how we can make simulations uh, sufficiently um, faithful that they can be used for decision making. That's what we call actionable outcomes, because an actionable outcome in this case is the computer assists a clinician in a clinical decision, which they can then take uh, very quickly and more reliably than they could have done otherwise. It's the analog of weather forecasting, because today we know tomorrow's weather um, today, because we run 
sufficient number of simulations in detail on very powerful supercomputers all concurrently, so at the same time. And that gives us the opportunity to make predictions that are reliable for tomorrow. That's a prediction for everybody, but in the case of medicine, each person has to be studied separately. So it's our ability to represent the, the human body and the phys physiology with sufficient credibility that we can take those actionable decisions. That's what's kind of exciting to me.